God Hits. Hey everyone, and thank you so much for joining me today on my YouTube channel. I'm your girl, Robin Nicole, the inspiration specialist, and I'm wired to inspire you to live your authentic purpose. So y'all, to be honest, I just hit record. I really didn't have anything planned. So when you see whatever the, the name of this episode is, it's I figured it out at the end. I didn't know before I recorded. So I'm just going to talk. I'm just going to be spirit led and whatever comes out, comes out. Cause I just feel like the Lord is just wanting me to be present and to serve in a way that's most needed to those of you who may need it. And maybe you don't have anybody else to turn to. And maybe there's nobody that would understand what you're going through. Well, I do want to say this for those of you who do feel alone, like there's nobody who understands you. I want you to take comfort in this. Sometimes that's the best possible thing you can experience. I know that's an odd thought. And many people feel like, well, unless somebody else can agree with you or understand you, something is wrong with what you're feeling. But I personally believe that sometimes God allows us to feel things and go through things where we just literally feel that situation by ourselves because I think that that's an open door for us to connect and get closer to him. Why I think that? I think that because God is always opening a door and always present for us to stay connected to him and not just here and there, but consistently throughout the day. One of my childhood friends, she always says like, I literally talk to God all day long. And most of us do, you know what I'm saying? Those of us that are believers and we do know that our creator is the source of our strength and everything that we do. We tend to say, Lord, help me. God, help me. Lord, show me the way. Just kind of things that we say all the time. And if you are not a person who does that, give that a try. It's not going to hurt nothing. Keep your heart pure and your intentions open. And you're going to see that God will be there for you every step of the way. Now, in addition to that, what I do feel led to say to someone right now is that your perspective and perception both need to change in the situation that you're focused on. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I heard hyper. You're hyper focused on something. You're impassioned about it. And it's not that there's anything wrong with you feeling that. In fact, this is not even about a right or a wrong thing. So let me be clear about that before I continue. And I, I do, I am very grateful that you've landed here to hear this because this is important. And I do feel it will break something off of you. The thing to remember when you're dealing with perspective and perception is that it is never about that very thing you're focusing on. Landing on your opinion or your feelings or thoughts on those two things are based on other variables. Important, important variables, by the way. Variables that usually have to do with each person's individual experience. What, e what each person has experienced in their lives, oftentimes that is the filter people look through when they're giving you their opinion on something. And I, I I feel like you are, it just seems like God is saying that you are in a place where you have connected to a perspective and a perception that was given to you from someone else. And because they so passionately delivered it, delivered it, you are stuck to that. And the reason why you are uncomfortable right now is because it doesn't settle in your spirit. Well, it's not supposed to settle in your spirit, my friend, because you know that even though they were passionately saying this and they were coming at you a certain way, you didn't feel like that was necessarily it for you. And that's okay. But what I would tell you to do is, is this, it's time to unplug and revisit the perspective and the perception of the situation. Because what does happen too a lot of times, and people laugh at me when I say this, but yo, we have our gut feelings, but a lot of times your gut feeling is not always something negative. And not just that, sometimes your gut feeling is a layer to something else. And I just don't understand why so many people don't understand how powerful having those gut feelings are. But if you are immature in understanding how God moves spiritually and how God moves in the unseen, you can often pass off that gut feeling as, oh, I had a gut feeling that was going to happen. When sometimes y'all, God wants you to go deeper than that. Like, okay, God, I got this gut feeling, but that don't normally match that person's behavior. What is going on with that part? Because that part is foreign to me. I know something is up with them, but what exactly is it? Like, it, is it really that, right? Because here's what happens with your gut. Your gut always gives you that indicator. Hey, you need to look into this deeper. But I learned as I got older, I had to learn how to be careful 
and more patient with God as he revealed to me what I was feeling. Because oftentimes I would go with a negative thing and it wasn't negative at all. Again, that is that space. I call it your knower. That is where God drops something in on you to let you know that something is a why, but also that something is on point. Also that something is awesome. Also that something is good. So you who are you, the person that I'm speaking to right now that is really struggling because the perspective and the perception that you have been given about this situation is making you uneasy, pull back from it and ask the Lord today, Lord, remove the scales from my eyes. Because maybe what I was thinking was based on other variables, but it's not really what I know. That's why I said it's your knower. Listen, you can have a gut feeling in your knower, but you know that it means something else. I hope you catch that. Because if you make the error of assuming that that feeling is like, oh yeah, I had a feeling it was this and that, and you don't go beyond, you can make a grave mistake and error. I have done that before. And it took me a long time to understand that there are even levels to your gut feelings. But this is what's so beautiful about God being so strategic and specific about you in particular, because he wants you to know he, he's always in the details, right? But even in that it's simple, it's still simple. And it's still something to grasp in a way that's going to make sense to you. That is the part I don't want you to miss. It's not about. Feeling something in your gut is not about knowing it. That, that's just a part of it. It's about really seeing things through the lens that God wants you to see things. That's why perspective and perception are so important. And I'm going to give you another little fun fact. I want you to go and look at the difference between the two by definition. Go look at the difference between the two. And that is also going to give you some insight. But somebody, you have to unplug from what you've been thinking and what you've been carrying because that's not it. That, that the, the, the enemy trying to put you in a trick bag and you're going to roll up on here today and you're going to get out of that mug. So thank you, Jesus, that that's, that's in your near future. You're about to get peace about all of this because you knew something wasn't right even when it was happening. So I hope it makes sense to you. Okay, and the last thing I would like to say is this. There's some things that, you know, somebody listening you want, but you are waiting for opportunities for it to happen. But God is just wanting me to tell you, create your own. Some of you have to get out of the space of waiting on things to happen or waiting for something to come around again so you can go. You have to create your own experience. And I'll give you an example of how I'm seeing this because this is, this is, this is a very clear example, but it's not specifically to this type of thing. So let's say you're the type of person who likes to go to concerts. And you like to go to this particular concert every year. Like this is the one you like to go to. But in the meantime, you still have this desire for music and you want to, you know, listen to this. Let's just say the particular artist is, it's your favorite artist. So your whole thing is no, like I can't wait to see them in concert, but then you got to wait like another nine months until the concert comes and you literally just deprive yourself from enjoying that artist or trying to see them in another location because you're trying to wait for that. Well, this is what I mean by that. Maybe call over a couple friends, cook a little cool meal, and then just play that artist all night so that y'all could kick it. You know, just make it vibey if that's what you need to do. But I'm saying all that to say, some of you are waiting on things and you should be creating the experience. You should not be waiting on the thing to happen. You can wait for, you, you, can, you can plan to go to the thing you've been waiting for, or you can plan to try to get that job. But some of you have been just getting pulled and God is saying, hey, listen, I know you're waiting for, you're looking at Indeed every day. You know, you're looking at all the job sites every day. You're on LinkedIn all the time. You didn't redid your resume. You did this, you did that. I'm not saying I'm not going to put you in the workforce, but if you're just waiting on these people to call you, somebody will call you at the right time, but maybe you have to create the opportunity. Maybe you have to look at the thing that you're applying for and saying, you know what? Do I have these same skills and qualifications? Maybe let me up, let me upload myself on Upwork and see if somebody would just hire me as an individual to get it done until I get those people to call. And that actually might open up a door for you that could be way more lucrative or something you can do in addition to that. So I say all of these things to say that I did not have a plan. Um, I didn't know what I needed to say, but I feel like I did all I needed to. 
And I, I hope, Lord, I understood the assignment. And I hope that this served you and blessed you in some way, shape, or form. And y'all, if it didn't for you, share it. More than likely, if you heard it and it didn't connect, it's because you heard it for someone else. We want to maintain a mindset of service. And we want to understand that God is who he says that he is. And if you do what you know you're supposed to be doing, doing in regard to your purpose, according to his plan for your life, all will be well. And I do, but well, wait. Hold on. Y'all know how I get. I do want to say one thing. I know over here, I talk about living your authentic purpose. You can go back from 2017. I've always talked about servanthood. I've always talked about service. I've always talked about doing that through the guise of your particular platform and your particular way, not a way other people think you should, but the way God called you to do it. If you are listening to this and you don't feel like you have a calling, you don't feel like you have a purpose, you don't really know what any of that is, don't worry about it. Keep on living. Take the pressure off. I, you know, Listen, I'm wired to inspire you to live your authentic purpose, and it's all good. In the meantime, though, just, just take it light and keep on living. Take it day by day. Keep praying and seeking God's face for what you need to do. But somebody needs to hear that. Take the pressure off yourself. You, you obsessing about, what am I going to do? I have to know today. I got to... No, you do not. All of that is a fallacy. That is all a fallacy. Okay? Like, relax with that. Stop doing that to yourself because it's not necessary. And don't let somebody else tell you that either. Stop looking at the person next to you. Stop looking at the people around you. Stop believing all this this, this, this fake stuff. Everybody look like they balling and everything popping and it's trash in real life. Don't believe that, y'all. Do it your way. Do it your way. If you got to upgrade, downsize, move around, stay still, whatever that looks like for you, do not get yourself in a trick bag because you're worrying about what other people are doing and it's making you feel bad for purely and honestly being exactly who you are. Let them say what they want to say about you. Because I can tell you one thing, I bet you you sleep good at night. Who knows what they're doing? So don't put yourself in that rat race. It's unnecessary. See, look, that was, see that's why you got to let the Holy Spirit flow. And you get all that good stuff when you're obedient to that. So with that being said, make sure you like, you share, subscribe, you turn on the notifications. And I want you guys to stay tuned. I introduced my Patreon to you guys last week. I will give you all of the information in the next two weeks. And then you guys can start signing up if you want to join me over there for definitely more in-depth, intense conversations and some breakdowns that are going to blow your mind, going to be so fire. And y'all... I wanted to tell you this too. Today is the first day of the second quarter of 2022. So make sure you think about how you want to rock this next month, next three months, and just see what that needs to look like for you. That's just a little something I felt like throwing out to y'all. But stay tuned. I'm Wired to Inspire. I hope you are too. Roll God Hits.